I'm the director of a core facility on campus called the R.L. Giuliano Structural Bioinformatics <laughs> Core. Now this core is a computational core uh, and my job is to help researchers incorporate structural biology into their research. And so we do, uh, we work with structure, generally protein structure, but sometimes tRNA structure or other types of RNA or DNA structure. So we work with structure of macromolecules and many times we combine structural analysis with sequence analysis. This workshop that I'm giving today is just an introduction to a visualization tool, PyMol, that will help you generate uh, figures for if you have presentations or papers or grants or that sort of thing. So you can uh, generate figures or do analyses on a protein molecule. This is going to be a very brief introduction just to the basics of PyMol. If you have additional questions, if you're working on a project you'd like my uh, expertise advice, I'm willing to meet with you, talk about your project, and also um, help you with any issues that are coming up. So feel free to contact me uh, anytime you have any questions, whether about PyMol or anything that falls into the general area of structural bioinformatics. Now the first thing we're looking at today, the first little bit, and I'm going to try and keep it short, but it's a critical part to go through, and that's the introduction to the structure itself and the structural database. So if you're looking at a protein structure, there are some things you need to know about that structure. And you can find that information at the protein database. Now this is the uh, URL for the protein database, rcsb.org. Now there are actually two structural databases. We're only talking about one of them today. Uh, the other structural database is a small molecule database. And actually these numbers are probably somewhat um, out of date. But the, structure, the small molecule, the Cambridge structural database, has many more uh, small molecule structures than the macromolecular database has. We're talking about uh, the protein data bank, macromolecular structures, so rcsb.org. Now at this uh, database, we're going to introduce you to the database, uh, searching the database and looking at a protein uh, PDB file, a protein data bank file. And I'm going to introduce you a little bit to the two experimental techniques by which you determine a structure, experimental structure. And once I do that, you'll know why you need to understand a little bit about the structures, uh, the techniques that solve the structures. What we're not going to have time to cover today is some of the statistics uh, behind the protein database. Now, if you go ahead and pull up a browser, uh, Firefox, you should have one on your terminal. Uh, you can go to rcsb.org and you'll see a web page that looks something like this. Now you'll notice that there up at the top, upper right hand corner, are the current number of structures and the current PDB statistics. So if you click at PDB statistics, you'll get some information. I'm not going to take you through that information today, but you can see there are, the last time I captured this, there were 85,000 structures. And does anyone have that up yet? And can you tell me the number of structures? Okay, so there's 94,000 structures, 715 in the protein data bank. So the protein data bank is updated every uh, Wednesday. So you, there are a lot of structures that you can search through here. And what we're going to be talking about is how to search through these structures. But before we get into that, I want to just give you a little information about the status of the structures. Now the uh, 
structural biologist, the experimentalist, when they determine a structure, they are going to deposit the structure into the protein data bank. This needs to be done prior to publication. So uh, it generally is done prior to the submitting of the publication for review. And so uh, the reason for this is that 20, 30 years ago, structures could be published but would not be made publicly available. And the scientific community felt that if grant money was paid to solve the structure, those coordinates should become publicly available. But at the time, because it could take five to ten years or more to solve a structure, and uh, many experimentalists actually working on solving that structure, it was felt that the person, the researcher determining the structure should have some priority. And so researchers now are required to deposit the structure, uh, but they are allowed to request that that structure be held back for up to a year past publication date. So the issue is, once you see a paper come out about a structure and you think, oh, that came out this week, I want to go look at that structure, you may find that that structure is on hold for at most a year past publication date. So that is what this uh, small slice of structures are here, which is they're on hold until a certain date. Most structures, though, are held uh, until publication. And as soon within a week or two of the article coming out, those coordinates will be publicly available. Those structures are under the classification HPUB. Now the other thing I'd like to say as long as I'm here talking about this is if you're waiting for a paper on your structure and you're assuming I have not seen any papers on my structure, so it must not be publicly available, the answer to that is perhaps it is. And the reason is there are some structural genomics efforts which work at solving uh, all the structures in a particular genome are all unique structures or they have different classifications. And when they publish, they're publishing perhaps even several hundred structures at a time and they're not necessarily individually listing the structures. So it's important to know just because I have not seen a paper with the structure of my protein, you're, you're, that structure may still exist. There may be a structure available of the protein you're interested in. So the question becomes, how do I search the protein data bank to find structures of my protein? Now, I'm going to mention two ways, sequence similarity searches. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. Uh, and you can also do text searches. You can go to the RCSB website and search for the name of your molecule. But the way that I use almost all the time is to use sequence similarity. Now, for the people in the room, how many of you have done a BLAST search at NCBI? Okay. So we have most everybody in the room uh, who has done that. So you can do this at NCBI. I'm just showing you an alternative database here where you can also do a BLAST search. And this is the Expacy database which is not searching against non-redundant that NCBI searches, but they have a Uniprot database which has some very nice uh, characteristics. Again, I'm not going to address any of that today, but if, if you have questions, then contact me. So if you go to this website, if you search the normal database, uh, you would put that in here. If you're searching the protein data bank, you would put that in at the lower location. 